Bristol. Early morning flights are being targeted by customs officers, clamping down on passengers attempting to profit from cheap and illegal tobacco from outside the EU. Um, colleagues at the back are having a look, see if they can pick out any cigarettes or tobacco, possibly drugs as well. I'll stop whoever needs to be stopped. Yeah, we've got uh, a, just the one bag, is a black and grey big Okay, thank you. It's back coming through now. And watches closely to identify the passenger. Guy with a white t shirt. Then waits for him to walk through the green channel. If he has cigarettes, it's at this point an offence has been committed. Are you aware of um, the allowances of what you are actually allowed to bring back from Turkey with regards to cigarettes and tobacco? No. Okay. Did you purchase any tobacco, uh, cigarettes, yeah. alcohol? Yeah. Who are they for? Are they? Uh, right. They say they've been given false yeah. information in Turkey. He's actually got somewhere in the region of 4,000 cigarettes, and you are only allowed 200. So that's quite excessive amount to bring back, really. You just go by what they allow you and pay the consequences possibly. It's going to be an expensive mistake and gives the man the bad news. It's an offence because you didn't declare it. If you'd have declared it when you came, no, when you came in, before, before you came through the channels, if you'd have come to one of us and said, I've got this amount. Excuse me, I've got to the end of that thing, there's no something to declare or nothing to declare. There is a red point down there with a the phone. It's, uh, it's, it's right by the bag, where the bags come out. As a possibility, you would have been allowed to pay the duty on the cigarettes. But for an amount like this, 5,000 cigarettes, when you're actually only allowed to bring back 200, it's just too much. It's too much. I'm sorry. In Dover, customs officers are hunting for smugglers on a different scale. And trucks carrying certain cargoes set the alarm bells ringing. This lorry full of chipboard is a prime target. Or well, the vehicle looks a bit, a bit dodgy, yeah. Armed with their giant X-ray, customs can quickly scan huge trucks and innocent drivers can be sent happily on their way. This load is chipboard, the zone's intact, you're free to scan. Thank you. So we're looking, looking for any inconsistency. I've been told the load's chipboard, so it should just be the same all the way through. There's something in there that shouldn't be there. This here, there's a shadow across the centre there. You see the shadow even more there, right across the centre. The X-ray has picked up a large anomaly, which needs further investigation. Shall I? Okay, cool. okay. It looks highly suspicious. So the truck will now need to be offloaded. It will take hours, meaning a long delay for the driver. Back in Bristol, the man who's had his cheap Turkish cigarette seized by Anne isn't going quietly. After her 12-hour night shift, Anne's doing her best to keep calm. There's one there's one rule for one person, one rule for a different person. One customs officer will allow one, one customs officer will allow something totally different. This is the kind of thing that puts small businesses out of business and that is what they try to stop. No, it isn't. It's getting the money from the, go for the government. It's, a, it's a, a large amount and it wasn't declared before you came through the channels. You actually came through the channels without making... What channels are talking about? This, this point down here, these, that you walk through. The man doesn't have a leg to stand on, and Anne's patience is being tested to the limit. I understand at this point there is not a green channel because there is construction work taking place, but everybody that wants to declare something should either speak to one of our officers that is stood here, or this red point here, there is a phone, and if you pick it up, you will be connected to a customs officer and you will need to declare what you have. This is a declaration. If you make this, we offer you to pay the duty. Unfortunately, you didn't do that. Well, I had to stop you. Well, it came from there. 
But I walked over the hill. Yes. I'm looking for my baggage. I come round here. I get my baggage. I look here. Nothing to declare arrivals from European Union. Whoosh. Where's something to declare? This is oh, now something to on, declare. Yes. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Where is something to declare? Well, it no, doesn't need off, to it. say... Yeah, play the so game. It doesn't need to say something to declare. You can read, obviously, and that's... Nothing to declare. Big letters. Yes, that is. I'm not going to argue anymore. Look. Goods to declare, red point. Warning, oh, if you have failed to make the appropriate... That. I didn't know that. All I... <sighs> I, I'm know, not going to argue about, about it anymore. Okay. You do have the right to appeal yeah. against my decision. Okay. Um, the rules are the rules. I'm sorry, I don't make those rules. I know, it's just the way... It's just, you know, one for one, one for another. So I can keep these, can I? Yes. As a final act of generosity, Anne decides to let them have back their allowance. But the man's angry mother doesn't know how to keep quiet either. I think they should be sorted out. They're telling us one thing and laws another thing, though. I'm sorry, but I disagree with that. Undercover officers also take on cigarette smugglers, but on a global scale. In 2003, investigators in Bristol got a tip-off about a second-hand furniture dealer called Smith smuggling cigarettes from the Far East. Smith's level of business and his income tax returns didn't reflect on the lifestyle he, he appeared to enjoy. He had a, a large house and a swimming pool. It was decided that we would mount a surveillance operation on Smith to identify his associates and to gather evidence to support a, a likely prosecution for cigarette smuggling. One of these uh, associates was, was a gentleman in Birmingham called George George visited Malaysia on a number of occasions and it was, uh, it was obvious that those visits were to, uh, to organise the eventual importation of containers. The investigation uncovered an extremely well-organised criminal gang bringing in containers of cigarettes to Southampton Container Port. What they were actually doing was piggybacking containers of flat pack bunk beds from Malaysia and China. The cigarettes were in identical boxes to the flat pack bunk beds. The only difference was no bunk beds. During the surveillance, officers in Southampton x-rayed a container hiding over two million cigarettes. But to guarantee a conviction and ensure the maximum sentence, officers also wanted to prove that Smith was responsible for coordinating the importation, which meant proving links to the Far East. It was clear that in, in Operation Commute that Smith must have had contacts in the, in the Far East. One person identified through the surveillance was, was a Malaysian national female. Smith and the woman were clearly unaware that they were the focus of a high-level surveillance operation. In, the, in July of 2003, officers surveilled Smith and the Malaysian female at Heathrow Airport. They surveilled the lady checking in for a flight to Malaysia. The officers searched her bags covertly and found exactly what they needed. She was totally unaware that the examination had taken place and officers found a diary and this female's diary contained handwritten notes relating to containers, freight charges, Far Eastern ports. The evidence of the, of the diary and Smith's association with, uh, with this Malaysian female, it put him up the ladder a, a few runs. It confirmed that he was an organiser of this, this fraud. At this point, the officers decided it was time to seize the containers and stop the illegal gang's trade route. Their funds were being, were being starved. They were running out of money. They needed to think quick. They decided to use another company to import, or another company name to import their containers. Um, the surveillance carried on on Smith. On one occasion, Smith was seen to, to leave one car and join some associates in another car. A keen, keen officer walked along, had a look through the window, and there was a piece of paper on, on the back seat. And that piece of paper had a container number on. That container number was the next container we seized. 
With a strong case against the two ringleaders assured, Smith and his associates were arrested. He had actually successfully, with George, imported 10 containers. With the help of our detection colleagues in Southampton, we seized 11 containers that contained 25 million cigarettes. The total revenue evaded was around about nine million pounds. With the sheer scale of the fraud and the overwhelming evidence, investigators weren't surprised by the sentences handed down. Smith was sentenced to three years, eight months imprisonment. George received a, a prison sentence of three years and 11 months. Some people would say they played the game. Uh, on this occasion, uh, the authorities won. Still to come, officers stop a tricky customer in Gatwick. Why have you been out there for a week? I don't need to tell you. Well, I'm a customs officer. Yeah, but I don't need to tell you. All right. That's not your business. Coming up, a passenger's playing up in Gatwick. Um, I haven't finished yet. Sir, let this go. This is my dopamine. You still read my stuff. Stay there. Off the coast of Cornwall, customs cutter searcher is patrolling the limits of British waters, hunting for yachts headed for the UK from the Caribbean. Right, we'll just leave us at Mary's, the Silly Isles, and we're going out to the west. Um, and we're doing what we call a deep sea sweep. We're looking for anything that's out there, small commercial ships, yachts, fishing vessels. And we'll go and have a look at them, and within a 12 mile limit we'll board them and, and see what they're up to. The Atlantic is increasingly dangerous at this time of year but smugglers are prepared to risk their lives in the hope of sneaking drugs into the UK undetected. In territorial waters, uh, we've got the power to board any vessel and ask people questions of where they've come from and search of vessels. Colin uses a powerful radar to scan the ocean for yachts. It tells us there's a target there and that allows us to watch his course and speed, see where he's going, which direction he's going for a start. And then we'll go and have a, actually have a look at him. It's nice to find things. So it gives the guys a buzz. Um, that's what you're here for in the first place. But today, there's nothing around but a vast ocean. And it's easy to see why the cutter crews are the most sought after jobs in customs. Beautiful, aren't they? And that was the game you used to do. You could see how close you get to the basket shark. The chipboard truck with a suspicious x ray is now in the search bay. The German driver is questioned while Michael tries to uncover anything stashed inside the load. Well, it's a load of chipboard, um, it's already done, it's been drilled in two holes towards the back. As I drilled through it, kind of went down about that thing and then just gave way. Um, and as I pulled the drill bit, I could smell a little bit of tobacco and also I could see a little bit of tin foil. The only problem is, is with wood sometimes this, because the drill, it burns it when you're, when you're drilling. It can smell a little bit like, um, you know, kind of tobacco type smells. It could be a false alarm, but as the top layer of chipboard comes off, the source of the tobacco smell becomes very clear. Michael has uncovered a massive haul of cigarettes in a coffin concealment. The driver is arrested immediately. <laughs> Well, there's a large quantity of tobacco, uh, mild cigarettes. Um, I'm guessing there's some other bits and pieces in the boxes and stuff, but we'll find out in a bit. Well, the chipboard load's quite normal, and um, it's quite common. But as you can see, there are, it's easy to conceal items within it, because you can, it's only cheap wood, it's a cheap load, they can get rid of it quite easily, and they can cut holes in it. While the driver's question to see if he's involved, the officers need to count up the cigarettes. How much is it? You've got 160,000 in there, in the boxes. Yeah. 160,800 um, on the pallet. So in total, it's 320,800. Yeah, 160 one. So like six. In all, nearly two million cigarettes. Because really, you spend so much time looking in lorries and, and not finding stuff, because obviously, you know, not everyone's bringing things in. So it's, it's good to find something. That's a, a good number as well. This is what we kind of want to get, really, because this is the big numbers.
In Gatwick, the baggage x-ray has picked up a suspiciously empty suitcase and customs want to talk to the passenger. Officers have to tackle all kinds of passenger and some are more cooperative than others. Hi sir. Hi, where have you come from today? Tripoli, yeah? Okay, just want to bring your bag over here for us. Just here. Officers ask simple questions to work out if further investigation is needed. But this man is making things difficult. Yeah, no, that's fine. We'll, we'll try and make this as painless as possible. You need to be quick, yeah? But I understand I've got to do my job, though, yeah? Just, uh, first of all, whereabouts are you going to in the UK? Where, where's home for you here? Well, I live here. Yeah, yeah, where's yeah, home? Yeah, give me your system. Right, if you tell me, then I won't have to go and check it. Yeah, you go and check it. No, if you, you just you tell me where you're going. Give me a break, then just let me go. Why have you been out there for a week? I don't need to tell you. Well, I'm a customs officer. Yeah, but I don't need to tell you. All That's right. not your business. Did you pack the bags yourself? Yes, yes. And do you know what's inside your bags? Listen, I have just opened it. All right. Can you check well, if you can op open your bag up, let's have a quick look inside again. Officers were alerted by the empty bag, but are now very intrigued by the man's demeanor. Just got an empty bag, yeah? All right. OK, that's all right. No, no, no. I won't need to take my everything out. My son is just looking for me. Just get all right, sir. All right. Sir. All right, you leave, leave me to this, all right? And I'll finish, and then you can be on your way. All right, just let me do my job. Finish and let okay. me go. It's yours. How much money have you got there? You can count it. It is your money. No, it's, it's your money, so, yeah, so you, you tell, tell me how much you got. What does that have to do with you? So? What does that have to do with you? I just would like to know how much you've got there. I don't need to tell you. All right, fair enough. And this you. Unless the man starts to cooperate, this baggage search could take quite some time. Searcher's deep sea sweep has so far been a washout. We've been heading back in for St. Mary's now. Um, unfortunately, there wasn't very much out there today at all. We've searched quite a big area, but all this we've found is lots and lots of dolphins. But heading back in, the radar picks up a target. This is the target here, this chap here. The yacht appears to be coming from the Canaries, a frequent transit point for drugs from Africa and the Caribbean. In this neck of the woods, but uh, mostly where these vessels come from, um, into this area, uh, I'd suspect that if there's anything there, it would be drugs. And it's possible it'd be quite well hidden aboard the yacht as well. Officers boarding vessels at sea never know what they might face. The drugs trade is worth billions, and smugglers are willing to protect their goods with force. Smugglers also try hard not to stand out from the crowd, so even the most innocent looking boat needs to be treated with suspicion. This boat seems harmless, but they can't afford to take anything for granted. It's just a customs visit. One of my colleagues is just going to have a quick look around. How many people are there on board in total? Four of us. It's just the four, is it? Nobody else down below. Just let my colleague have a quick look. It'll come back to me and let me know. Do you have any um, any drugs on board? Cigarettes? Spirits, narcotics, firearms, guns, knives, explosives. You've got knives for the kitchen, that's fine. While the officers question the crew, the officers searching below deck signals the all clear. He's happy. He's happy. He does that when he's, when he's happy. They decide that the boat is clean, and the happy crew sail off into the sunset. Yes, Ray Billy. Uh, that's us just left the Dutch yacht. <laughs> But back in Gatwick, it's not such plain sailing. 
Hang on, I haven't finished yet. It's all right. Oh. Sir, let this go. This is my document. That's how I'm Yeah. So I need to have a look at that. No, no, no. All right. This is my document. This is special. That's special, is it? Yeah. Well, I need to have this a quick look. No. This is my document. That have, that's special. Don't need to have a look at this. Anything you have in your baggage, sir, is liable to, for me to have a look at. Yeah, right? I don't need to read my stuff. Stay there. Stay there. The man's erratic behaviour is still causing concern. Alright, you're not being very helpful, sir, are you? Just want to leave that stuff there a second. Some background checks reveal this isn't his first brush with the authorities. Yes, CRO September 6th, violence, Fits in. <laughs> to rule out any possibility the man's carrying drugs, they need to search him and swab his shoes. I've spoken to an independent senior officer, all right, and they've authorised a rub down search of your person. What that mean? Just like a, a pat down search like that, okay? What we do is we'll take your stuff with you and we'll go to a, with a private room just out there, right? Out the back, the man continues to make things difficult. Yeah, just pay, place it on the bed for us. That's right, just place it on the bed and you, you can see it when it's done. I'd, so I'd rather you just place it on the bed. So please. You can see it. I'd rather you just place it on the bed. Do a swab of them. Um, it's got two mobile phones plus another SIM card. But again, nothing on the shoes, so there's no other reason to hold them. So, all right. In the end, it was all a lot of fuss about nothing. The, the smallest reason can just, someone can just uh, kick off and, and he just threw his uh, dummy out of the pram and just chucked everything around and that, that was about as much as he could do. You know in those first couple of seconds if it's going to be worth it or not um, with him and it was definitely worth taking further just to see what, what he, his story was really. The driver of the chipboard truck was released on bail, while investigations into who's responsible for the two million cigarettes continue.